Welcome back, Las Vegas. I hope you guys are ready because the woman that's sitting across from me has a, a giant laundry list of accomplishments and business endeavors. I'm sitting here with Amanda May. She is the CEO of Amanda May Beauty, the beauty editor at Deluxe Magazine, a brand ambassador at Novu Contour. Might have messed that up a little bit. You got it right. Be yeah. Yes, beauty director for Genesis Lifestyle Medicine, another ambassador for the Vamp Stamp, which is on the Home Shopping Network. She is a product dev for a beauty product of her own, which we will discuss. And she was voted top 20 leaders in Deluxe Magazine in 2020. Thank you for sharing your time with us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You are an absolute beauty expert. I have to say everything that you're doing is involved within this, this industry. Um, we can dive into that very deep because there's a handful of things that we could do. But before we do that, uh, give us a little bit of a, a background or a little bit of a summary of whom, who Amanda May is. Oh, wow. That's such a good question because <laughs> I could go so many directions with Perfect. That. We'll, we'll steer it whatever direction we need to go. Uh, who am I outside of the label and identity of business Yep, is, um, I really focus on being the best version of myself as a woman and the impact that that has in the people around me. And so when I think about who I am, I think much bigger and broader than the labels or the identities or the hats that I could wear. And I really think about my beingness as a human on this planet and the impact that I'm what I believe I'm meant to have in this industry and, and also in the lives of the people that I interact with and come across. And so, you know, there's nothing that like puts me in a box of who I am. I feel very big. I feel very, um, flowy with life. And so, and so, so I, I, I guess you're a little bit of a philosopher. <laughs> you like to think very deeply about things, especially for, an industry of beauty that's kind of based around, you know, the, the surface level, mm -hmm. um, at least from the exterior standpoint when you're looking at something, but uh, yeah. beauty goes much deeper than just uh, what is presented. And this has really been a lifelong learning. Um, my biological father passed away when I was 16. And so at that point, it was very difficult for me to connect with my worth as a woman. There was a lot of indoctrinations and beliefs I had around his passing that made me feel like I needed to cover up who I was. And I used makeup and beauty to do it. I still notice that at times when I'm dealing with something internally, I'm like, I need to go fix my hair or I need to go get my nails done or I need to put lashes on because it just makes me feel better on the outside. And I think a lot of women are doing that in this industry. And to be able to, to be in the industry and also shed light on, it's okay to be authentic. It's okay to be real. And that's what makes you beautiful. The stuff on the outside, it's both. It's a balance of both. You know, don't let yourself go on the outside. Mm -hmm. Be beautiful. Present yourself as the amazing woman that you are externally, but also really focusing on being the best that you can be internally too. Yeah, it's very important, especially in the city that we're recording in, in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. that is based around uh, superficial superficiality and uh, the many positions that um, exist in the sh on the strip, you're considered a model. So there is a lot of evaluation that goes into your look and your mystique and not as much focus on your personality per se. It's more of just like what you see is what you get. That's kind of like what, La what Las Vegas is. Uh, what, what type of clients do you, do you tend to work with in Las Vegas? Uh, my clientele, when it comes to actual permanent makeup, because I own a permanent makeup academy and studio, um, that tends to be a older 35, I say older. I, was, <laughs> I just put myself in the older category. <laughs> oh my God, what happened? Um, <laughs> 35 to 60 ish. Um, usually the women that are coming to me for eyebrows are ones that did our eyebrows like Pam Anderson did like the real skinny tweeze your eyebrow off, you know, and then years later we're like, what do we do? So now we're trying to, you know, get that fluffy full eyebrow again. Um, and women deal with things like hormonally that cause hair loss and, um, you know, just anti-aging. So 
I tend to to pull more of a mature clientele, we'll call it that. <laughs> uh, but my students, because I have the academy as well, they they're younger, they're newer in the industry, which is just so life giving because they bring this energy into the business that I'm like, Oh, that's cool. I want to do that. You know, it keeps me young. Um, again, I'm sounding like I'm like way older, but you know, I've been doing this 20 years. So I do feel like I've been in the industry a long time. I've seen a lot of things. And with the the girls that are coming in fresh out of school, it's really nice to be that sorts of source of inspiration for them because I've had those people in my life. I've had the people that spoke into my life, even for example, like getting on HSN and I ran uh, Miami swim week. That wasn't on your list, but <laughs> we could talk about all that stuff. Um, but there were a few people along the way that really helped shape and form my career. And I'm so grateful that I get to be that for the younger girls that are coming into this industry, trying to find their way, trying to figure out how they come across authentic online, but still build a business and have a brand. And so, yeah, so my students tend to be a little bit uh, younger, new in the industry, fresh out of school, that kind of thing. And then clients tend to be a little more, more mature. Wow. So 20 years in the beauty industry, <laughs> what, what is the biggest change you've seen thus far from when you first started to now? Social media. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, 20 years ago, I don't, I don't even think my space was a it, thing. Is it the fact that those who come in and seek help from you want to want to want to have the ability to present themselves better on social media is that kind of what they're looking for oh there's so much to unpack on this topic because there's there's a few layers to social media the comparison game that happens the um let's talk from the beauty standpoint as a whole comparing ourselves to each other as women i saw actually an ad for an app that literally changes your entire body. Like they were like showing this girl who took a picture on the beach and she was like, just changing how tall she was, how thin she was, everything. And the comments were like, well, no wonder women don't think that they can measure up. And so that's a piece of it. I think us as women recognizing that we're seeing the highlights of other people's lives and, you know, the the, the filters and the editing and all the stuff that can happen. Like that's not necessarily really what people look like. I mean, I certainly know how to stand to like <laughs> look better in my photos. Um, you know, but when I'm at home, like in my, my mom sweats, like on the couch, the filters have really ruined a lot of what is actual, what is in actuality of reality. Yeah. So I think that from a beauty standpoint is just for women relaxing into their natural beauty and not not playing the comparison game. Um, and then as far as business goes, I mean, advertising from from a business standpoint, advertising, how you get your name out there, building a brand, you know, it's it's easier than ever because you don't have to do a commercial on TV. You don't have to be in a magazine. You, you literally can just post online and you know, that's your portfolio. That's where people are going to figure out who's the best, but understanding how to use social media. I mean, it's just a whole different ball game. I mean, I just didn't have that when I was younger, which is great because I had to do a lot of business building through quality of relationships. And that taught me a lot of character, authenticity, um, making sure that I was in it for the win-win and not looking for what can people, what can I get from people, but also what can I give to add value to the people that I want to work with. So it really helped me learn how to build quality, solid relationships, which some of these relationships take me into today where years and years and years later, things circle back around because I have great relationships and my character is there. That has helped me like really be set up for the success that I have today. Yeah. That, that detachment of reality on social media has hindered a lot of the, the younger generation's social capabilities. And you'd think in an industry of beauty that's literally presented in the real world, you would need an established relationship with somebody, especially if they're working with you for 10, 20, 20 years. And then you never know where those 
relationships can, can really unfold. Yeah. It is all about relationship. It is. That's, that's exactly how Vegas is too. So there's, as we mentioned, there's like a million different things that, that you're, um, doing. We'll start to the top. We'll start with uh, Amanda May Beauty. Give us a, a little description of, of what this is and what the objective is of the business. Yeah, so I actually hired a vibrancy coach, my very first ever hired coach. Congrats. <laughs> <laughs> that was like 20 years ago. <laughs> Do you see how vibrant I am now? Um, she, when, when did I hire her? Probably... Um, in my mid twenties. Uh, so she was the first coach. I'd never had a coach before. Uh, but I was like, I want to learn how to live vibrant. And this woman was so vibrant. And I was like, um, telling her what I wanted to do with my makeup line. And she's like, it needs to have your name on it. You need to be your brand. And I was like, I have no idea what that means. Like I didn't get it. And so I, I named my company divine instead which is also a great name. Um, but it kind of circled back around after many other business coaches and a lot of learning along the way. And so when it came to having really some quality things under my belt, things that I've done in the industry that are notable, that people find value in, it's like, okay, now I can go back to it just being my name. So I guess the Amanda May Beauty brand is me and it kind of encompasses everything that I'm doing. So it's not necessarily just like one piece of the business, but um, it's really just who... Amanda May, if I talk in third person, shows up as in this industry. So that's kind of everything I do falls under that. So you're, it's it's like your Swiss Army knife of beauty. Yeah, you, you cover, I you, like that. You cover that's all good. cover all courses. Yeah. I, I kind of felt fell into the same category when I was starting the podcast. Is that I didn't want to put my picture on the the podcast because I didn't want to come off ve- like egotistical and maniacal. But then you come to learn that if you put your name on something or if you put your face or, or a picture on a brand, then people have an easier time to relate to you. Mm-hmm. And it, it's like almost counterintuitive to, to what it actually is. So placing your name on something, it makes it much easier. I guess it gives you probably a little bit more freedom to, to extend into all these other beauty categories. And you're probably the fifth to seventh different beauty expert that I've had on here, mm-hmm. but I've, come to realize that there's this like huge push for like organic or like not the natural look. Do you see this kind of trend as well? Yeah, I do. I think that one of the wonderful things about social media, because I kind of talked about it, like it was a bad thing, but it's great. Um, is the fact that we have more awareness around products, how to use products. I mean, that wasn't big when I was, when I was learning, I mean, it was trial and error. I didn't have like YouTube videos to go like, you know, thumb through to figure out if I was doing it the right way. I just had to try it and go like, "Mm," or or, (laughs) yay, you know? So it's cool now because I think people get a chance to see, um, you know, what's working in the industry. And in that health and wellness is also a piece of it. People taking care of themselves mentally, physically, emotionally and from like, you know, a look standpoint, it's all of it now. And so with that being said, people are paying more attention to like their overall health and wellness. And I think that just automatically brings out a more authentic, genuine, natural looking beauty. Yeah. Right. How many uh, superstars or famous people we've seen that are gorgeous on the outside, but you could just tell in their facial expressions that they're just not happy on the inside. And that has an effect, especially with the, the growing evidence of how, what anxiety does on the body and stress and how you wrinkle faster and you become more dehydrated and all these other ulterior things that you don't want to happen to your body. Mental health has been on kind of at the forefront ever since the pandemic started we were all locked away for three months some some places even longer and we we decided to sit around and kind of ponder our lives and realize what we wanted to do and have we been a good person and all of these other things that have caused some people to do something different and change their lives kind of like what I did but then some of the people have gone into like a deep dark depression for that so 
when when you have clients coming to you, do they ask for mental health advice or anything with overall wellness outside of just the the aesthetics? Uh, I believe that the right clients are drawn to me because they're being attracted to what they feel. Um, I'm, I feel very good and confident at my work. However, I have a lot of clients that come and they go, I just knew I was supposed to book with you. And in those moments really, and this is where from a business standpoint, I have to get out of my head and in my heart. And it's like, feeling into what the clients are experiencing and being able to show up for them, not just physically, but vibrationally and emotionally. So a lot of clients end up leaving just being like, Oh my God, I feel so much better. I'm so glad. Can we be friends? (laughs) 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 Which of course I love having tons of friends. Uh, but they, I've worked a lot on myself over the years. For the last six, seven years, I've really dived into dove, dove, dived. You know what I mean? Yeah. I dove into (laughs) personal development and really focusing on who was I going to be, like I said at the beginning, um, working on hidden agendas, manipulations, making sure that, you know, my, my beingness is one that is going to attract exactly what I want. And part of that gets from the personal development standpoint, it's responsibility for myself and who I'm showing up as. And that means that the clients are affected by that as well. So, so would you say it's safe to say that beauty is just a, a very generalized word that is composed of your physical being, your spiritual being, mental health, your, your, your physical look and, and so much more, maybe even some components that haven't even been discovered yet. Absolutely. Interesting. Yeah, because we've also seen people that maybe at first glance, you wouldn't label them as the most beautiful externally, but you get to know their heart and you're like, wow, this person is amazing. Mm -hmm. And so it goes both ways. And we've seen women, people, I guess, women that are really gorgeous on the outside and there's no depth. There's the emptiness, you know, or the space that they're operating from is not an integrity and it doesn't make them look as pretty on the outside. So so are your services offered um, digitally or is it an in-person appointment or have you doing a combination of both as we kind of migrate into this like digital world? Yeah. I mean, 2020 was actually a really good year for me um, (coughs) because with the, the, learning how to teach online. I did a lot of Zoom coaching. Um, So through 2020, I had a lot of time at home to build out platforms. And so I have a six month program that my students just get. So from, from compiled from the last 10 years of my training and coaching, I put it all into one platform with books and um, educational videos on how to build key performance indicators and do a budget and all the things that are essential for me to have a a thriving business, I put in one platform. So that's all online. So all my students go through basically a six month training with me, which is not something that most permanent makeup academies are going to offer. Um, and so, yeah, there's an element that's online for sure. And then I can coach through Zoom and get the student to where they need to be that by the time they're hands on with me, they're ready to actually work on clients or models and then they can get there faster. So I've had to, I've, I've had to adjust in my business too, which has been great. Cause I think, uh, the, the students that I see really dive into the program that I put together online, they are the most successful. They've got the tools and they're excited about it. So as they're working through the platform and the different elements of building a business and a brand, understanding how to be a great artist, but also a great woman and also educated on the business side. I mean, they're just like, I mean, I get texts all the time. They're just like, Oh my God, this is so good. You got to put this out, you know, but, um, it's been fun to develop. I don't think I'll ever be done developing it because I, I'm always learning. I'm always growing. I always take new trainings. And so I implement whatever, uh, information's coming to me. I'll pull the pieces that I think are the most valuable and then pass that on to my students. So 
Did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I actually, I actually want to explore it a little bit deeper because six months is actually quite a long time. And it seems like many entrepreneurs are now coming up with their own course. Some of them receive a little bit more flack because maybe it's not as authentic or filled with as much uh, depth as we would like it to be to, for payment. Um, can you give us a little bit more of an in-depth analysis of what is um, composed in this course? Yeah, absolutely. And and I agree. There's a lot of people. Hmm. I don't want to watch what I want. How I want to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh. At times you will find people <laughs> that um, I want to be aware of my own beliefs on this because everything starts with a belief in me. So you know, just catching my own awareness around. And it's weird. It's it's say. weird when you have a thought and then you start saying it on the mic and you're like, wait, do I actually Hold believe on. this? Hold <laughs> on. Check. Mic check. One, two, one, two. Is that really what I want to put out in the universe too? Um, so being deliberate in my own speech. Okay. So at times you will find that there are people that get into the coaching because they see money and there is, there is a, an, a larger amount of money that can be made when you become a coach. The piece that's missing is the experience. You you can't take regurgitated information and teach that and think it's going to last. I mean, there, there's been 20 years under my belt of learnings along the way, failures included, that have helped me get here. And so um, that's really what I've taken. I've also hired coaches. So I've, I have some of that information in me, but I've taken time to implement what I was taught and take from a lot of different elements and my experience. And so putting it all together, that's where I feel, um, what I've put together ends up being really valuable in the industry. So, uh, it's a program called Asana. It's all online. It's great because when the students sign in, I get a notice. <laughs> so when they don't sign in, I also know. <laughs> so then if a student comes to me and is like, I'm just not seeing the results. I'm like, mm -hmm. when was the last time you signed into your program? Yeah. They can't, they can't like fake it. I can be like, nope, you didn't. Um, so you got to put the work in, you know, the, the information's there, but like anything you have to put the work behind it. So when somebody logs in, they, it's a little bit self-guided. They have to decide where to start, but there's eight modules that they go through. Um, and those include uh, branding and marketing. So they're going to go through elements to just start to identify what do they want their brand to look like, what colors speak to them, what fonts, how do they put it together, and then being aware of what are other companies doing. So I have PDFs that they download. I have exercises that they go through. And it's like recognizing different brand elements that they're seeing out in the market around them every day. And then they go, okay, I know. So that's why they use that color or that's why the tagline is that way. So they become aware of what they're doing instead of just having their name as their brand with a pink, because that's what everybody does. <laughs> you know, they're like, they're, they're starting to be more deliberate about the business that they're building. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's also, uh, I am like, I'm the queen of spreadsheets. Everything in my life belongs in a spreadsheet. I love spreadsheets. I have spreadsheets for days. So I teach them how to build a spreadsheet. <laughs> I'm like, I, I totally get excited about hey, it. If too. you, if you understand the formulas and you can automate that, it's, there's a lot of utility in it. Yeah. It just, it gets me excited. Like when I think about working my, like I said, I have a budget that if I change like a number today, like three months from now changes. And so I can really track my finances. Uh, and I just get so excited because I'm like, I get to do my budget today and do it every, like usually every week. But um, yeah, so I teach them how to actually formulate a spreadsheet with budgeting, um, but also tracking KPIs, which are key performance indicators. What are the things that they need to do? And I give them outlines like this is what I did, but what do you need to do? And how do you kind of mold your own report so that you can track your own success? Um, so that's something that they go through. Uh, so I really teach how to build and live off spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's, um, there's also like model stuff. So if, depending on what they're learning, if they're learning lip tattooing, body tattooing, uh, brow tattooing, those modules look a little bit different. There's a book 
book reports every every month. So they have to read a new book every month. And then there's also questions in that book from the book that I've pulled. So key things that I want them to be paying attention to when they're reading, there's questions that I've outlined. Here's what I want to know. What did you get from this? So that I know when they read Start With Why by Simon Sinek, they're, they're pulling the information that they need to help build for the following month. So, um, so that's kind of cool. So it's almost like a little book study. That and that's also do. a great book too. It is a great book. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and it's where you start. You know, why are you doing this? Cause when students say, and I do a really thorough interview process, I don't take every student that comes my way. Uh, it needs to be aligned cause I also have to commit to them for six months. So I want to know that they're going to do what they need to do to be successful. Uh, because there's somebody else that wants to coach with me. And if they take up the spot, you know, they gotta be, re they gotta be serious about it. Um, so what, yeah. what, what's the capacity limit for a six month course for students? Right now I have six. Um, I could probably do 10. I mean, I, what I could do, <laughs> I could do She's a like, lot, add another but... <laughs> zero, put another zero on the end of that. <laughs> um, but it, yeah, I could, but I, you know, with, I also want to live a balanced life. You know, I have a wonderful relationship that I'm building with an incredible man and I have a son and a home and three dogs. And so, you know, I also like to hike and travel. And so I want to, I want to fill my soul too. So, you know, I could certainly fill every day with work, which I did when I first started my first brick and mortar location, um, I worked like 12 hour days, seven days a week. Um, I made a lot of money and it was a lot of fun. And, and then after I was completely exhausted and I was like, this is not great. I don't want to do that. I want to have balance yeah. and I, I want to have a thriving life all the way around. And I think that that's beauty, you know, and to be successful, that's what success really is. I have everything I need in life. Um, I'm always going to continue to grow. I'll never hit a place where I'm like, okay, I'm done. You yeah. know, financially, personally, relationally, all of it. I want to continue to grow until the day I die that's a and grow after. Too. Yeah, that's a that's a perfect summarization because social media kind of distorts that reality with the the Lambos and the mm -hmm. Don Perignon and the girls and the strippers and whatever that's always posted yeah, about I it. Yeah, I definitely so. don't have any girls and strippers yeah. in my post. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> So that, yeah, the, the beauty gets lost. And also in Vegas, it's a very hustle culture, which is something that people have been preaching online for at least two decades since it's existed, where you have to work 16 hours a week, you have to, or you work a regular wage job for eight hours and you go home and work for eight hours. And then there's no time for, for any sort of personal life. And they're like, you need to sleep three hours a day to have success but really you need a full night's sleep to have success. And as long as you concentrate your effort into four hours or five hours and you're using your brain and not working a linear wage job where you're renting your time out in somebody else's business, then you can find success. Cause I felt, I found this, or I had this epiphany recently when I quit the nightclub and started the podcast I would complete everything that I needed to do within three hours, but I almost felt guilty because we had been trained and groomed to work eight hours a week. And so I was like, what? I felt like this urge and this anxiety that I needed to fill the time with something when in reality you should be using it to just better your mental health and understand everything that's to it. And that humans probably aren't meant to work 40 hours a week. We can do it, but burnout is a real sensation that will, that has ruined many lives. And sometimes it's really hard to recover from that. Wow. The, yes, I am in complete agreement with you. <laughs> Do you ever read the four hour work week? Yes. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Love I'm a book. big, I'm a, Tim yeah, Ferris I'm a big, fan. big Tim, Fer Tim Ferriss yeah. fan. Yeah. He was actually one, him and Joe Rogan were two of my inspirations to start a podcast and do long form so that you could connect with people and that this is work, you know, building relationships, doing a podcast is uh, investing. I like to call myself a social investor. I'm investing social capital into you. In return, I get some social equity or it's redeemed down the road for something that is under that would be under your your discretion and that not everything needs to be tied to some sort of financial compensation because that's not really how the world works. Oh, I love that. I That's a wonderful perspective. 
and you probably, you, you would be, you'd fall in line of the social investor as well, because you're investing your time into your students. Yes, they are paying you some sort of financial compensation for it, but you're investing more than just your time because you're limiting the size of the classroom to six people so that you could be more direct, right? Like when we went to high school or university, especially at UNLV, when I was in a class of like 300 people, it's like, there's no way the professor could relate anything to me or relate to him. So you don't invest as much time into the class because yeah. you just feel kind of like looked over. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Tell me. So as you mentioned, you like to fill your life with a lot of uh, extracurricular activities that aren't involved in business. But as I introduced you, there's about 400 <laughs> things that, that we covered. <laughs> um, so you mentioned that you had a product line, correct? Mm -hmm. I do. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah. So um, I started doing makeup initially 20 years ago. <laughs> and um, I, the need that I saw in the industry, in the, in the product industry or product market was like simplifying things. Everything feels so complicated. <laughs> there's like 20 products for this and five colors for that. And just, it's just a lot. And it's like the, the everyday woman who hasn't been trained in makeup or doesn't watch YouTube videos all the time is like, I don't even know where to start. And so I really wanted to simplify the beauty process and the beauty routine for women. So I took things that I saw as being like broad and turned them into like one product. So the product that I have that shape magazine voted the try it product of the year is a we it's like a wheel. It's a concealer wheel. It's a cream consistency. You can use it anywhere on the face. So I call it concealer, but women can use it as highlighter contour, uh, blush. I mean, anything that they want, any color that they want to put anywhere on the face, they can. The, the intention behind it was to take all the corrector colors and concealer colors that women could buy from a brand, which could be anywhere from five to seven products and put it into one unit that somebody could pick up and have in their bathroom and have everything they needed in one piece. Uh, and it lasts forever. It's like a little magic wheel that mm. never ends. Um, is because two years later I'll hear from clients and they're like, I finally ran out. And I'm like, shoot, <laughs> I wish you ran out a little faster. Are you using it every day? Um, but yeah, I mean, even my, my own, I have forever. My sister actually, she was like, Hey, uh, you know, when did you change the color of the packaging? I'm like, cause I, I had it as black and now it's silver. And I was like, I don't like five years ago. And she's like, huh, I still have the black one I'm using. I'm like, oh you should God. probably get rid of that. Let me send you a new one. Um, but it does last uh, a long time cause a little bit goes a long way. And, and that's why the editors loved the product because it does so many things. So it simplifies the process. That's really where my intention is when it comes to the products that I personally want to have my name on that I bring to market is making it easy for women to to feel and look their best. And if it's easy, they're going to do it more and they're going to feel empowered to put a little bit on and, and feel vibrant and fresh and, you know, show up in the world like that. Yeah, I know the, the makeup process can take a long time to so simplifying that is a benefit to to the women and also their significant other that's <laughs> waiting on them to go to the club <laughs> i actually getting ready today um my man told me like wow you got ready really fast i was like hey thanks <laughs> <laughs> i hope you know you actually took something out of the silicon valley playbook where the general thing with tech products is that you either unpack something or you package something so for example um what Netflix did is they basically unpackaged the uh, cable thing, right? They took all of these different things that were within cable and they made it very simplified. And so what you did is you packaged everything into one to make it much easier for somebody. And to the contrary, now I think we're going to see something with, with Netflix where you're, there's going to be a package service of like Netflix and Hulu, Hulu and, and Disney plus and stuff. So this is just like the, this is just the trend of human societies that you take things, put them together, and then you tear them apart when the technology mm -hmm. gets better. So it's interesting that you say that because the <laughs> to to make it simple, 
I did that. And now I'm like, huh, now I need to do this product and this product, this product and make it a package yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and make it a whole like five minute routine for women. So like making it simple so that I can put a package together to sell it, to make it simple. Yep. So, yeah, cool. Yeah. I love it. That's, I'm on the right track. Thanks for the confirmation. You're definitely on the right track. How did you go about creating a makeup product? Was it, Is there a manufacturer that you had to reach out to to help that? Is there a chemist involved? Yes. Yes and yes. <laughs> so um, I actually reached out to a ton of manufacturers in the U.S. I wanted everything made in the U.S. Um, so I reached out to a ton and I got sample products from everywhere. So when I found the consistency of the product that I liked, then I honed in on the color. Like what colors did I want it to actually have and what did I think was going to work? So I pulled products that were from other manufacturers and I sent it off to the one that had the consistency that I liked. And I said, okay, so I want the, this consistency that you have of the cream with these colors. And then I found the packaging that I wanted it in and that I got from overseas. Um, and then I had that shipped over to the manufacturing plant and then they did the fill for me. So it was a process. I mean, and then I actually, when they sent me the samples, like I gave samples out to, I think five, maybe five of my close girlfriends and was like, I want honest feedback. Uh, and I wanted women that I felt like would be honest with me, but I also trusted cause they use makeup products. So they knew what it was that they would be looking for. Um, and I got feedback from like from them on like colors, consistency, package, like what, did they like it? Did they not like it? Was there any changes that needed to be made? Yeah, it's, so. it's important to have friends that won't just be yes women or mm -hmm. yes men, because sometimes we surround ourselves with those type of people and we don't even realize it. And we put out a product that isn't suit to be out there, but because our friends told us yes, yeah, then we actually did. I always tell my students too that I, I get this a lot and they don't know. I mean, you know, you learn this over time, but they're like, no, my aunt said that my brand should be this. And I'm like, what does your aunt do for a living? <laughs> Where's your aunt live? What is she, you know, does she know enough to be able to give you that kind of feedback? Not that you don't want feedback from your auntie, but is that the person that you really want to take the feedback and run with? Uh, because they need to know, they need to know how to run a business to be able to give you that kind of feedback. So I get that a lot, but yeah, I definitely have friends that are going to be honest with me. Most of my friendships have been like 14 to 16 years. Like all my wow, friends are like long-term authentic. friends. Are you yeah. originally from Vegas? Ohio. Ohio. I grew up in Ohio. And what brought you out here to Vegas? <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> don't worry. I've had a lot of people on here say they've come out here for like a stripper, a relationship, some sort of weird business opportunity. Oh, yeah. I've heard, I've heard some weird stories. So, well, mine's probably going to be the polar opposite. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like God told me to come here. <laughs> so it was definitely not those, not that there's anything wrong with coming for any of those other reasons. Um, I was living in Ohio um, after my dad passed away, I'm going to back up a little bit after my father passed away, I started doing drugs, um, just to kind of numb it. I didn't know what, I didn't know what else to do. So, um, that was an easy out to not experience the feelings and the pain that I was going through. Um, and then I got pregnant and, um, my son's almost 18 now, wow. which is crazy. Uh, but during the pregnancy, I would be up at the weirdest times and like two o'clock in the morning, almost every night. And so after I got sick of watching every episode of Roseanne, I decided to turn on Joel Osteen. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Just a sli slight shift in, mm -hmm. in, uh, viewing <laughs> options. Um, so yeah, I started watching Joel Osteen and his message was so inspiring and I read his book, Seven Steps to Living at Your Full Potential, and it had just come out. So he was like doing commercials on it. And it was like, God just opened up my heart. And I was like, there's more. I have more. I have more available to me. I want to be somewhere where I can thrive. Um, I want to get out of the crappy weather. Uh, but also feeling stuck. I felt really stuck there. And I knew that God had more for me. I just... Didn't know what it looked like. Um, yeah. So after, I mean, after I read that book, I was like, that's it. I'm leaving. My whole family was like, wait, what? You're going, because they all knew, you know, that I had, I had been in 
drugs and, you know, had a new baby. And they're like, wait, you're going to Vegas? I'm like, yeah, God told me. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, are you doing drugs again? <laughs> so, so, so so the idea of Vegas, it wasn't for opportunity or anything specific. You just felt gravitated to the city? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's an incredible yeah. story. So I... I flew out here. Um, I think Isaac was about nine months old, maybe about nine months old. And he, um, I flew out here and started uh, like just exploring the city. Oh no, I know. Hold on. There was a reason. Rewind. <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> there was no, when I, when I did, I met this girl. This is, this was what started my, uh, thought process on Vegas. I can't believe I forgot this part. Um, I was doing skincare at a medical facility and she came in and she was so vibrant and she was just so full of life and she was so happy and she was so cute. I remember her outfit was like, just like really unique. It was, she was definitely not from Ohio. I knew she was not from Ohio when she walked in and I'm like, where are you from? She's like Vegas. And I'm like, tell me more. <laughs> um, but she told me, she's like, if you ever want to come visit, I like come stay with me. I'll show you around. So fast forwarding months later, cause I had then had my son and you know, I was like read this book. Mm -hmm. And so I had met her earlier. So I feel like God was, God was aligning the right people along my path to just like give me some awareness that there was more. And so, yeah, when I decided to come out and explore, I called her and she let me stay with her. So, um, I don't remember a whole lot about her other than that, but I came out and, and started checking out the city and applied to my first job was at the Wynn. I was in the, I was in their spa. So the luxury lifestyle, the, um, uh, understanding of the vastness of what Vegas had to offer was really like just pouring out on me while I was here because I hadn't, I mean, it was from a small town in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Like there was nothing like, there was nothing like it. So yeah. So it just really got me excited on the inside that like anything was possible. And I looked at the the city as a place like, I mean, people had a dream. Every one of these businesses, every, or every one of these casinos, these buildings, like the cool stuff that they have. I mean, the sh shows on the outside, it's like somebody dreamt that up and then that was it. It manifested. They put, you know, work into it, but their dream came to life. And it was like, what dreams do I have? And why am I limiting the ability that, that I can do those things with? Like I can do anything. And this felt like a city that I was going to be able to do anything in. Yeah, in Vegas, so. the desert oasis, the neon jungle, it's a place where anybody's dreams could come true and can also diminish depending on <laughs> if lifestyle. You, yeah. <laughs> depending if you could hold back your temptation, because that's, that's, I have fallen down that rabbit hole quite a few times before. Um, a lot of people do, but there Vegas we're in this like right now we're kind of in this like cultural renaissance it's a fairly young city compared to like places like Chicago and New York and Miami and LA mm -hmm. but everyone here you realize there's actually a small amount of doers and achievers and then you realize that everyone in this circle of maybe 10,000 people all know each other yes isn't, <laughs> isn't really it so strange it's, it's so a strange. really small city but that's why being a being a person of integrity um, is so important because the one wrong move and everybody's going to know about it, but being, being an authentic, genuine, real person in this city where there's just le less of that at times, um, you stand out and it's like you shine mm -hmm. and people like that and people want to help people that help them. So, you know, there's a lot of networking that takes place here. Um, yeah, and then but, the yeah. the, na the nature of, of Vegas too is exactly the industry that's been built, like being very hospitable towards people. And you're for that that woman lets you come stay. I'm sure you return the favor now whenever you meet people. I do. Even when I go to town too, I'm like, come out, we'll take you out. You could stay at my place, even though it's a 400 square foot apartment. <laughs> hey, we'll figure it out. Just get get your ass down here because you, what happens, and I've seen this as like a real trend, is if somebody moves out here from a different city if they stay out here for longer than about two years, then they're generally here for the rest of their life. And they're like, there's no other place that compares because of the convenience and the amount of opportunities that exist in this weird desert is just, it's immense. Yeah. Yeah. 
I agree. And I, so that was 2006. So I've been here. Oh, you're a native. <laughs> yeah, you're a native now. Uh, props it's to, official. Props to, you. <laughs> props to you. It's, I've done about 160 episodes now and maybe only 20 to 30 people were actually born in Las Vegas. Mm. The well, vast, you were. Yeah. I, yeah. So only 25% of the Las Vegas population was born in Las Vegas. So it's a very transient town. Everyone sees that. They can be whoever they want to be, you know, whether you look at Frank Sinatra or Elvis or whoever's coming out here, Steve Wynn, who's built all these like mega uh, casinos. Now Vegas is transitioning. I think if to me, it seems like we're transitioning past the like hospitality and we're starting to see like tech companies and adult entertainment and the film industry and the beauty industry and all these other industries beginning to flourish outside the city. So yeah, we're kind of like on the front, on the frontier of the next evolution of leaders in Las Vegas. It's so exciting. It is. And this is how we built. We're moving into this digital economy where the easiest way to promote yourself and to communicate is on air and record it. I like to call it learning in public, I guess, is like an easy way to say it. But a lot of those that be, that become your community members like to see those mistakes. They like to see that you're a real person and that you know, you don't say, or that you say, uh, or, and, or use the wrong grammar term in your sentence. Like that's what people are really looking for. They don't want these like highly produced shows or highly produced businesses where the, the CEO hides behind, hides behind their, their brand and their logo. They want to see who it is that's operating everything. Yeah. And that's exactly what you do. I mean, you put your name, you put your name on the business. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I was just talking about this yesterday, actually, just like how, Anybody who does this type of recording, they look back and they're like, oh, I wish I would have said it that way. Mm-hmm. Wish I would have done it different, you know. Oh, but- I have to tell you, my first episode is very cringe. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good it's a good milestone, though, that you look at it and you see how far you've grown, no matter whether you're doing a podcast or in the beauty industry or learning some new craft. Mm-hmm. You're going to suck in the beginning, no matter what you do. So as long as you can be vulnerable, those those are the people who generally find some sort of success because... It's like the, I think it's called the, there's, there's a a term. I think it's called the presenter fallacy or the, uh, Oh, I know what you're talking about. It's like, it's like, it's, Um, it it surrounds the person who's on stage when there's a crowd and the crowd wants you to do good. But when you're the person on stage, you feel like the crowd's against you. But like, why hmm. would, why would the crowd be against you when they paid to be there or they took the time out of their day to be there to support you? So it's just, it's this weird fallacy. And some people feel the same when they're sitting in UC on the podcast, right? They're like, all the listeners want me to fail. But in reality, it's just, they just want to listen to hear what you have to say. They want to relate to somebody that has some sort of success and feel like they're there with you. It's the same thing with being on stage. Or now I feel like the modern day superheroes or entrepreneurs like, like ourselves who are going out there and not afraid to, to look bad or to make a mistake and that those are the ones who who become our community members. Yeah. Yeah, I know you have also, speaking of community members, looking through your Instagram, you have quite a community that's beginning to develop around you. Is there do you is there any way that you would or any specific way that you would describe your community or those who support you online? <laughs> that's that's a really good question. Mm. I've never thought about that. <laughs> I, this is a, it's a question I like to throw at most people um, that are growing because we're kind of both of us are kind of like in our beginning stages. We're not in the very beginning. We have some growth and we have people who support us. So I think it's good to step out and acknowledge those who support you to understand like your demographic outside yeah. of just like, oh, middle aged white women, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like those who've come to. I've, I've come to learn that watch the show where those people who are like in a regular, who are working a regular wage job, but are looking for some sort of motivation or influence to kind of like kick them like off the cliff and be like, all right, now it's time to take the leap of faith and to pursue something. Yeah. I get a lot of women that reply to, um, all aspects of what I post, whether it be like fitness or fashion or beauty that they're just like, I'm so inspired. I'm inspired by this thought. I never thought about it that way. I do feel like there's a, a draw, um, with what I put out there to more of that authentic side. So yes, people are supportive of all the business things that I do, but when people really start hearing about the growth, the development, like femininity, 
feminine energy is something that I've been, really been working on this year. Uh, right now, what I feel like is coming up in my spirit is relaxing <laughs> and being peaceful and allowing things, not um, not pushing for things, but allowing things to come to me. That is something that, you know, the message is, I feel like the messages that come to me are ones that the women need to hear. And that's really where I get the most responses. So I think the community is women that are hungry for a deeper level of connection, deeper understanding of who they are, deeper awareness around how they can really create a life that they're really, really happy in and get rid of this like hustle to use the word that you used, which I think is a brilliant way to put it because so much of like the hashtags are like, you know, hustle, women who hustle, hustler women, yeah, stuff 20, like that. 24 seven mindset. And it's like, whoa, wait a minute. We're missing the mark here. It's not necessarily about doing this. It's about being this. So that's really where I'm relaxing into and trusting the people that God has, has put around me to be a part of my journey. And so that's where I feel like my following is the most engaged is when I'm real and authentic about those things. And then of course, like as soon as I post something with Sean, all my women are like, <laughs> Oh my God. I love this. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. I, I, I've also noticed too, when I become a little bit more vulnerable or upfront with what's going on in my life, that tends to be more engaging because yeah. they want, they want to let in because in the past, um, in the past before social media or even just before this digital economy, anyone who was doing something was hiding behind their, their brand and their business. Nobody knew who the CEO of Coca-Cola was or who was running this ever, this resort. But now everyone wants to know exactly who that CEO is, who's the founder, because they have to support the product as much as they support the same person. The example I use often and my listeners probably gonna hate me because I use this all the time is Elon Musk and Tesla. Mm -hmm. I would say, I would say it's safe to say that a big majority of those who buy Tesla is because they support Elon Musk and they like his mission that not only is he building electric cars, but he's taking people to space and they're like, okay, anything this guy does, I want to support him because I like him. And so that's kind of this trend that I see now in, in the real world is that you have to be this authentic brand as much as the product that you put on the table. Which is great because we have the, we, we have the ability to know if the people running the companies are in alignment with our, our own vision and goals and mindset and integrity. And we can make an educated decision on, is this something I want to support? Because you are supporting a brand and a person. And so it's like, I want to know that I use an essential oil line. And I, when I went to the conference and I learned about the mindset and the goal behind the, the leadership, I'm like a hundred percent, this is a brand I want to buy from. I want, I want everything to be from here. You know, the way that they sustain their packaging, what they're doing in other countries, the give back. I mean, all of that. Like I have the money to spend, but where do I want to spend it? And spending it on something that when I, when I put that out into the universe, it's going to come back to me because it's in alignment with who I am as a woman or as a person. It's like, yeah, that that's where I think social media is great and podcasts are great because you do get to hear the heart behind a brand, a company and why people are doing what they're doing and who you want to be aligned with. Like I, I want to make decisions and moves that are deliberate to be aligned with people that are, that are like-minded. Yeah. That's the way that we connect now. We all gravitate towards each other. Um, so we are coming up on, on an hour though. I, there was something else I wanted to cover already. I know, right? The time, <laughs> time flows and give me another hour. Right? I have a lot to say. Uh, <laughs> we'll have to, we'll have to run it back in the future. I've done a handful of episodes with returning guests. I yeah. absolutely love it because understanding somebody is much more than understanding the product or the business endeavors that they're doing. I like to call this show a, a like hows and whys more than a what's because it's easy to say, what do you do? What is this beauty product? How do you go about it? But I need to know the whys, just as you as you talk, uh, spoke about with uh, Simon Sinek's book, mm -hmm. which which leaves a big lasting impact. Is there anything we're looking forward to in the the life of Amanda May that's coming <laughs> up here in the near future? 
Yeah, I mean, I'm st- I'm still very much excited about the deluxe version, being able to write and be a beauty editor for them. My vision is to be able to write for many magazines, many articles, you know, and really take the expert uh, viewpoint that I have in the industry and put it out, even still in print or online. And so I'm excited for that. I'm putting together um, this next uh, issue now. So I'm working on that currently and I've gotten to use some really, really cool products, which is also really fun because people like to send me stuff. And yeah. I, I, it's like Christmas day at my house. It's almost like when Amazon comes, like, I feel like it's Christmas because I love opening packages and I get packages of beauty products all the time. How, how long have you been writing for deluxe? Um, this is my third session. So probably nine months, almost a year. That's awesome. Yeah. Timothy's yeah. a good person too. Amazing. I've been trying to get him to come on the show for like months, but we won't do it. <laughs> if you're listening, if you're listening, Timothy, Tim, come on, Tim. come on. <laughs> so what, what type of, what are the articles, um, composed of? Is it, is it more of an opinion based? Are they factual how to articles? What, what is that? Well, like? I get to, <laughs> the fun of being, being the beauty editor is I get to decide. <laughs> I love deciding. Um, I, every, every issue I get to decide what I want it to be. So the first issue I did makeup bag must have. So things that women could, should consider having in their makeup bag. Most were to simplify the process, uh, things that ranged price point wise. So like my fa- my favorite mascara, which is <laughs> we're going to talk beauty for a second. My favorite mascara is actually like 10 bucks. I've tried like mascaras that are 50 and I'm like, no, every woman needs to know about this $10 mascara. You go buy a new mascara every month. Um, so like bringing those things to the reader, this last one, I did like a full body makeover. So I talked about that. I worked with a doctor in, um, Florida who actually, I've actually helped develop products for, and, um, he did what was called like a Y lift on my face. So it's a non-invasive facelift. So things that Pro, uh, service wise that women could maybe look at doing for anti-aging, uh, or overall f- physical appearance that maybe weren't as invasive as plastic surgery. Um, and so I talked about that and I think that was really good because people realize like, okay, there are other things that I, I can do, but I was also very transparent about you know, like, Hey, these are the things I didn't like about my face or these are the things I didn't like about my body. And here's how I found solutions for that. And then this next one, because it's a holiday, it'll be a holiday, uh, gift guying. I did this yesterday. I said the exact same thing. (laughs) Gift buying guide. I just say that slow. Yeah. Um, so this next one will be fun and it'll be a little lighthearted about different beauty products that you can give as gifts for the holidays. All right, everyone, make sure that you go buy um, every Tim's issue. Tim's Magazine? Yeah, Deluxe Tim, Mag. Tim, we have to support Tim so right. he wants to come on the show. So I've been trying. See how this works? I've been trying it multiple, multiple <laughs> it's <a win-win>. times. <laughs> uh, I have one final question that I ask everyone that's exiting on the way out. Same okay. question. What does Las Vegas mean to you? Limitless opportunity. Boom. Easy. Straight to the point. Vegas is, and this is something that we discussed throughout this entire conversation of the immense amount of opportunity that's presented. So that is the most popular answer, actually. Oh, man, I wish I would have said something else. <laughs> well, you'll have, a, you'll, you'll, have a, you'll have a redemption <laughs> the second time around. Uh, where do I send all the listeners and those who are watching on YouTube to follow you along your journey or any other links or things you'd like to mention before we get out of here? Yeah. So my Instagram is Amanda May Beauty Boss. That's me personally, beauty boss, hashtag beauty boss. Okay. (laughs) Anyway. Um, (laughs) um, And then the, the business one is Amanda May Beauty. Um, and that's where you find the services and the training and stuff. Um, and then to keep it really streamlined, my website is amandamaybeauty.com. <laughs> Easy. Straight to the point. You can't really mess it up. <laughs> okay. Well, Amanda, thank you for sharing your time with us. Um, you are an incredible entrepreneur who understands beauty from multiple points of view, which I think is very important for where we are headed, especially um, in a world where there's much more importance on your your internal looks than than your exterior. So thank you, thank you for for doing what you do and for talking with us. We'll definitely have to to run it back sometime in the near future. Awesome! Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for listening. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>